how I became an undercover is actually by accident. What happened was me and my partner, we ended up pulling a car over and pulling a bunch of drugs and guns and stuff out of this car and brought it back into the precinct. And the narcotics division was in there. The lieutenant saw us bring all of the stuff and said, hey, you guys would make good narcs. So I was like, yeah, whatever. And two months later, I was transferred to the, to the narc narcotics unit and I became an undercover. In the narcotic business, what we do is we get what they call kites, which are reports and stories, phone calls, letters, complaints about a location that's selling drugs. So we got kites on this one place that there was a male black selling cocaine out of his house. So me as the undercover, I gotta go scout this location, go knock on this door and see if I can make a buy from this guy. So, so I do. I, I, I walk up to the door, I knock on the door and a, a male black answers the door and behind him is a female white. Later, I, I find out that's his wife holding a baby. This guy's name was Skeets. S-K-E-E-T-S, Skeets. So I said, hey, how you doing? Uh, you remember me from the bar? He's like, no, I don't know. I don't know who you are. I said, no, man, we, we hooked up. A couple weeks ago, you told me if I need anything, come here. How, how would I, you know, come to your house, man? You, you told me to come here. He's like, dude, I don't know who you are. I said, listen, forget it. If you don't want to, you know, I just need a, a gram. I'm looking for a little Coke. You know, I'm going to party with my girl. And that's it. If you can't hook me up, you can't hook me up. I don't know who you are, get out of I said, come on, man, you, you met me in the bar, we played pool, I, we had a couple of drinks. You drink Coors Light, right? You drink, you know, don't you remember? You, oh, yeah, yeah, I remember you. Oh, yeah, man. What's so up? I kind of talked myself into becoming, uh, having a, a, a conversation with this guy, letting him believe that he met me. I never met the guy before in my life. Never saw him before. The first time he seen him was when he opened the door. I don't know you. I don't know you. So he's like, no, you know what? I don't really know you. And he kind of like shuns me away. So I said, listen, man, here's my number. Call me. I walk away, get in the car, I drive away. An hour later, he calls me back. I go to the guy's house, and boom, what a story. I walk up to the guy, he sells me a gram of cocaine for like 80 bucks. I got his phone number now. I call him back the next couple days. Hey, man, dude, that stuff was fantastic. Can you hook me up again? He's like, hey, I said, come on, man, it was great. I better, you come to the bar, meet you in the bar. I'll buy you some drinks, how's that? Start becoming friends. I go to his house, buy him again. Meet his wife, invites me in, coffee, c cakes, making me like, you know, a sandwich. It was unbelievable. Very nice woman, by the way. Me and him become buddies. Every week I go to this guy's house, buy a gram, buy two grams, buy three grams. Now I start hanging, hey man, let's go to the bar, have a couple of beers. I want to see his friends, I want to meet his friends, so I meet his friends. He's introducing me to his cousins, his family, his buddies, all of his guys. So then I start buying bigger weight. I start buying, you know, uh, quarter ounces, ounces, which is the more the weight you buy, the higher the crime comes. So at one point, it becomes an A1 felony. So I continue to buy this guy. I continue to have establish a very, very great relationship. We're going to lunch. We're going at 3 o'clock in the morning. We're sitting in diners having Slovakia platters. The guy is actually, <laughs> this sounds crazy to say, but he actually was a nice guy. And it was, it was, dominant, the guy was dumb in rocks, but he, he ended up being a nice guy. And he's, I'm, his, I'm like this guy's best friend. He thinks I am like, as my grandma would say, the bee's knees. He is loving me. We, we had such a relationship going that literally the guy thought I was his best friend. I'm hanging out with him. And my boss says, Maz, we gotta, you know, we, we gotta do something. We gotta get to this guy. You know, it's six months I'm dealing with this guy now, and I can't get to his guys. So now I gotta tell him, I gotta come clean with him and tell him, listen, Skeets, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a cop. But the day I go to his house, his wife has, you know, she's got tea and we're, 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 she's making spaghetti and meatballs. We're having this whole little, like, uh, you know, early dinner, like, you know, 3.30, 4 o'clock, because I'm starving and he's hungry. And by the way, she was a very good cook. And uh, we're talking and he, <laughs> this, this crazy man says to me, right to my face, he says, Mike, man, I love you, you're a great guy. I, I want to ask you something really personal. And, and you know, you're, you're like my buddy. And I'm like, hey, what, what, anything you need, Skeets. He says, I want you to be the godfather of my kid. I was like, oh my Stop. God, I am so much, Stop. this is just getting out of control. This is out of control. Now, I, I, I felt so bad because not, my, my, my sentence then was, I, I can't. 
He's like, you what do you mean? Be Come on, man, you're my best friend. I'm like, I'm dude, I'm a cop. He's like, ah, get out of here. He didn't believe me. I said, I, I, my guys are right outside. They're outside, they're coming in to lock you up. He's like, nah, get out of here. I'm like, Skeets, I'm a cop. I'm telling you, I'm a cop. Sure enough, my guys come in. He's, he's, he's like in awe, he couldn't believe it. He starts crying, I can't believe it. He's telling my boss, there's no way he's a cop. And I'm like, Skeets, I like take my shield out, show him my shield, show my, I'm a cop. I felt terrible, but you know, look, it's my job. That's what, that's what you do. You know, that's what you do. I mean, the police, the, the, the police life is, is, you know, everybody hates the cops. This poor guy was heartbroken, but I felt so bad for the guy, and my bosses were cool. They were really, really nice guys. So I talked to my boss, I pulled him aside. I said, guys, listen, I mean, this guy, he's got five kids. He's got a wife here. He lives in a nice little neighborhood here. I said, we can't put this guy, you know, we need to roll this guy. Roll means make him reform. We need to roll him on our side because he's got contacts I can't get to. But now that I got him by the he, he, he needs to, he, he's, gonna, he's, gonna, he's gonna do what I tell him. So I pulled Skeets away. I said, listen, we're gonna, give, we're gonna make a deal with you. I'm not gonna put you in jail. We're not gonna arrest you. You're gonna work for me. But Skeets, remember one thing. If you ever put me in a compromising situation, you're done. And he was very understanding about that, very cool with that. All right, all right, all right. So he introduced me to a bunch of his buddies. A couple months transpire, make bigger bars from these guys, boom, boom. So now me and him have to hang out all the time. He's gotta take me to the bars. He gotta take me to all his places. Take me to barbecues. You know, for another, I would say, probably five or six weeks, we were just hanging out and buying drugs from these guys. But now, I'm in the room. I'm making the deals with them. I'm giving the money. I'm, getting, I'm meeting the big guys. So, uh, so now we go in the bar. I'm gonna, I'm gonna buy, you know, a couple of ounces, which was, which, which, is a, which was an A1 felony buy for these guys. Skeets brings me in. You know, he, he knows, and he knows, because before anything, I told him, anything goes bad, you, you ever jeopardize my safety, make no mistake about it, you're the first one to go, Skeets, I'm telling you. So now I'm in deep, now I got, now I got these guys for a couple of A1 buys, and we're, uh, we're, we're ready to take them down. We're gonna take them down. So we're in the bar, hanging out, I got my, you know, I got my, my bud, drinking my bud, hanging out, smoking the cigarettes, we're doing everything, Boom, the, the team comes in, Ram ready, they knock everybody down, take everybody, of course, they get the coke, they get the guns, they get everything. We, we, we put everyone on the ground, including me. I'm on the ground, boom, they collar us, they handcuff us, and they take me in. I can't not be locked up with these guys. I gotta be locked up because all of these other guys, besides Skeets, gotta know that I'm not a cop. So they lock me up, they lock all the other guys up, they take us into the cells, they put us all in the cells. Each other and you know now I'm sitting in the cells with these guys because I got I gotta be so they know that it's me and Skeets ain't the rats. So now with now the argument starts. Don't say nothing. When we get out of here, we get dealt with. That's all I got to say. Yo, Yo. Man, you got a lot of Yo. Right. You quiet down in there. You see I want I want phone for. I'm like, you, you guys set me up, you know, of course I'm bull myself. And Skeets crying, I can't believe I'm I'm locked up. Meanwhile, these guys are going to jail anyway. And they take one guy out to process, another guy out to process, and I had to be in there for a while, boom, boom, until they come and get me out, and then, you know, and, and then it's pretty pretty much finished, and these guys all plead anyway, you know. Once you get them with drugs and an undercover buy, they all plead, there's no trials anymore, you know. In, in narcotics, very rarely are there trials. When, it, when an undercover makes a buy, these people plead. I'll take, you know, 15 years instead of going to jail for life. So we actually took this, it was, it was, a, it was, a, it was a good bust, it was a good, uh, good, good amount of drugs and, and, a, and, a, and a good thing, and Skeets walked. Skeets never went to jail. So an undercover is, you know, you're an actor. They have nothing to lose and I have a lot to lose. Very scary thing to be on, you know, just walk into a, a place, knock on the door and say, hey, you know, can I get, you know, five kilos of heroin or whatever, you know, and they'd be, you know, who the hell are you? So it was, it was interesting.